Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Feral Life Podcast. Today, I'm going to be speaking to Tom, the dude from C6 Threads. He is, I believe, the founder of C6 Threads. And if you don't know what C6 Threads, I mean, that is a mouthful. She sells, she sells, she sells. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down there. C6 Threads is a really cool um, company that makes super rad board bags. And uh, Tom is going to have a little chat to us all the way from down in Australia. Um, even though Tom is not from Australia, he pretty much is an indigenous by now because uh, he's picked up the accent and everything. But Tom, welcome to the show, dude. <laughs> Was that a big enough entrance for you? Thank you very much. Sorry. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, absolute ripper. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Great. Good on you. Good on you. I see you drinking beer. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Australian, Australian diet. Well, it's... Sorry. No, no, no worries. Ten thirty in the morning here, and um, I'm as much as I want to be. I'm not. I'm not gonna have one right now. I've just got off a call with the dude from Rosebank Brewing, who is our headline sponsor, and we're going to be doing a a feral frother beer um, in the next few weeks. So it's got a really cool, bright label, something for the summer, and it's going to yeah. be a really nice, cool, easy lager. Lager. Oh, I'm just doing a lager. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a, I brew my own bit, so I shouldn't actually really be drinking a Carlton Dry, but um, wow. I've got some fermentation tanks in my game, man, so I like doing a bit of brewing, and I've got my hot plants, hot plants out the front, so. You could do a seasick thread beer. Just for me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. So welcome, Tom. Thanks for making time in your busy schedule, because this man he burns the midnight oil. He works till midnight every night. He's like, he's, he's stitching by <laughs> hand the board bag. Show me, your fingers are probably red, bleeding. <laughs> that was a good impression, man. That was a good impression. <laughs> really? It's like with a little thimble, you know? That's <laughs> it. Oh, I'm working. <laughs> one, of, one of them licking it, trying to get it through your needle. <laughs> Have you got one of them old sewing machines that you pump with your foot? No, I want one, though. No. Really? I've just got, I've got these machines set up there. So this, this is a Toyota. I won't bore you. And that one's a brother, a foot uh, pedal lift. But um, no, I want to get one of those uh, things just to have a go. Yeah. Like, that's so expensive. Like, yeah. Well, everything old and cool and retro these days, especially in sort of Western countries and and first world countries have sort of skyrocketed in price, you know? Yeah, they must have just gone, oh yeah, it's vintage now. Let's just put a couple of zeros on the end. <laughs> exactly. Even the older folk these days on Gumtree, they know if something's vintage, you know what I mean? You could get bargains like five, ten years ago. Now they're like, mm, they've cottoned on to the fact that their, their old stuff is really expensive. Uh, my granny must be like worth millions. She's like, <laughs> she'd, she'd like, take her into a pawn shop and be like, yeah, that's vintage. Pay me. <laughs> she farts dust. It's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Whereabouts in Australia are you? Uh, so, um, southwest coast of Victoria. Um, so, about five hours west of um, Melbourne. So, uh, yeah. So, a beautiful little town, Port Ferry. Little fishing town. Tuna fishing. And, um, yeah, we, we used to live in Melbourne. Oh, well, just outside of Melbourne. Um, when we first... Um, emigrated over here nine years ago and um my my two younger brothers came out here and they started off in perth and and whatnot and drove around australia twice and then my my youngest brother moved back to the uk but our edward who lives in the city now he he stayed and he's happily married to adrian and yeah when we first moved there my wife wanted to be close to family because i've got a cousin who lives over there and we stayed there for I must be four years, five years, I think it was. And then, yeah, we just, enough of this. This is just city horribleness. And we moved there. And yeah, so we sold sold our house over there and bought this place there. We got on an acre of land and a little house and the kids are happy. We've got dogs and cats and I've got more cats now because in the back, at the back of the um, sweatshop, there's a garden. Yeah. There's, I was in between, I can't remember what I was doing. I was doing something yesterday in between making me board bags and um, I had like a thud. Like, that Anyway, went outside and there's like one feral kitten. I was like, all right, mate. 
told the wife, she came home, kids got back from school. And they're like, ah, oh, where's the kitten? I was like, in the garden. Another one. Anyway, there was four. There was four. <laughs> so, so now you got <laughs> four. Dude. You're like an animal rescue there. We've already got two, dogs, two cats, and then, of course, the kids are like, Dad! Yeah, no. Pity you can't teach them to sew, because you'd have a proper um, proper cat uh, sewing team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you never know. I mean, these days, with like uh, genetic modification and stuff. They... To be honest, it's, it's not just me. It's, I'm not on my own anymore, I should point out. There's um, a friend of my wife, she sews and she she um she makes she you know clothes and and whatnot and then just one day we were having a beer and I said ah do you want to do you want to give me a hand <laughs> yeah and yeah she's brilliant man she's she's awesome so I, I tend to kind of leave the sweatshop in a bit of a mess and she doesn't like it and I soon get told so it's great so let's 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 rewind a bit, a bit. <laughs> there we go let's rewind a bit yeah. if you don't mind Tom um. We know where you live, Port Ferry. You can check it on Google Maps, and um, we know that you make cool board bags. So you're originally from the UK, I understand. So moved over to Australia, and what made you come up with? I mean, when you when you moved out to Australia, what were you doing? What is your profession? Have you always been into textiles and sewing and that sort of thing? No, no, no. So this is this is where the the story of it, well, yeah, begins. So yeah. So I'm, I'm actually a plasterer by trade. Um, and as I said, when I grew up, I used to live in Whitby and then due to circumstances, I had to go and live in Portugal and I didn't do very well in school, but when you've got a school next to one of the best earthquakes you can ever be on, and I don't care, you can surf anywhere and I've surfed a fair few places, this place is just, oh, Carcavelish in Portugal, man, awesome spot. Anyway, um, I didn't do very well in school, so I went back to the UK did my trade and did a five-year apprenticeship in plastering and, and and all that malarkey. And yeah, when we moved here, um, yeah, I, I was, I was in construction, but the reason I actually do make board bags now, so I've, I've ever since the age of 13, 14, so well, I'm nearly 40 now. So whatever age that is, um, I've always been into surfing. So, but when we were living in Melbourne, I actually had an accident. And on a, I was on the construction site and I had a, a four meter I beam, so a steel I beam. Yeah. Drop, it, it dropped and landed on me. Wow. So it took out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it landed on my left side. So it dislocated my, like, dislocated my shoulder, tore my rotary cuff, tore my, tore my short. I think it's your short bicep muscle. You not. You, there's a long and a short, and it yeah. tore the short. Uh, and then like buggered my knee and my hip. And, Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to have operations and, and I still struggle now. Like I've lost 38% use of, so I used to skydive, so I can't do that anymore, but I can't put, you know, you put your arm up for this arm. It's like, you know, not, not very much. Yeah. 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 And I walk with, a, I walk with a bit of a limp. Um, so yeah, so my old, my old boss, who, you know, very apologetic and that, you know, he said, oh, what can I do to help? And I said, well, I can't go into construction. And he was like, well, whatever you want to do, we'll, we'll put you through uni, whatever. Wow. And at the time, my wife, my wife was making um, yoga mat bags. And she goes, ah, oh, you used to like helping me do that. And I was like, ah, oh, like, uh, you're my wife, I've, you know, I've got to help you. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she said, well, have you thought about textiles? And I was like, no, not really. And um, she was like, well, you know, you did enjoy it. And to be honest, I did. You know, a burly plasterer, you know, that's so <laughs> kind of thing. Oh. <laughs> what a shift in paradigm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what happened? What? So, yeah, so that was five years ago. And then I did a, a, a course sorry i was trying to remember the name did a course in textiles and then my wife said well you love surfing and you love textiles you know she did all this thing and i was like what 
what's this? What's this mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, wait, just just say it. Don't, don't, don't do it in actions. Just tell me. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That, that's how it all started, to be honest, Steve. And it's, you know, it, yeah, it, it, how do you explain it's I wasn't expecting it to like I'm not blowing my trumpet it, I'm doing it's going well and I'm proud that it's going well because one I don't even have a Facebook account for myself I don't I don't I don't really I'm not a computer person I don't own an, an Xbox or any of that stuff and yes. you know I'm not I'm not social media kind of I don't know what the word is inclined yeah. whatever but I uh, mate, it's like for yeah, for a plasterer, I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, I mean you've you've made some you've made some board bags for some pretty famous people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, yeah, a good few, which is surprising. But like, it's just weird. I haven't had to really bug anyone. You know, I haven't been like, oh hi, uh, you know. I'll... Would you mind telling us who they are that you've made bags for? Ah, yeah. Um, so, uh, Salama. Yes, yeah, Salema Masakela, who we know well in South Africa. Yeah, well, actually, bear with me. Cool. That dude is just the dude, man. He's so chilled. And But this is, I've, I've actually got to send this to him. So if, he's, if he watches this, sorry, if I'm ruining your surprise, Salama. But this is one, of, one for him. Oh, man, the love bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it, like, He's, he's very, not, yeah, spiritual, you know, well, you know what Salomon's like, and real positive, and, you know, and we, I was speaking to him, and, and he said, ah, the, the world needs some love, and I was like, damn right it does, <laughs> and literally, I was just doodling away, and then I, I drew the love, you know, did the love bomb thing, and I was like, I reckon I'd work as a board cover, <laughs> yeah. a board bag, sorry, and yeah, and that's that's how it came, man. It was because Sal Salomon was um just like this world needs some love, man. <laughs> I saw that on on his comment on Insta. Actually, this world needs some love. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. He's, he's yeah, he's a good dude. So yeah, so like Salomon, and then um the be the best one, like I, I, I shouldn't say best, the one I'm most like is uh, Jeff Bridges, the Jeff. dude. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big Lebowski, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Cameron Diaz has had one. Um Cameron Diaz. Oh, I shouldn't say this, but yeah, Love Island. A couple of contestants up there. There's a guy off a TV show over here. Um cool. Yeah, just lots of people. Yeah, but look, it's it's not just them. It's you know, everyone but it's like a lot of people obviously like what I'm doing, so yeah, well, I mean, your boards are, I mean, your board bags are, they're like works of art. And um, so, yeah, which, which is kind of what I wanted. To, like, my sister's an artist, my sister in law's an artist, and I've never really, it's weird because I've never really been that way, if you know what I mean. You, as a construction worker, you sit there, you have your cup of tea at 10 o'clock, scratch your balls, and then go and plaster a wall. You know, it's you, this, this side of things I've never really, done so it, it's actually really not, i enjoy it man I, I enjoy the oh yeah that ah well if i put that color with that and of course my wife goes oh no no that color doesn't work or, you know yeah she puts her little bit in. but um yeah it's it, I, I love it man it's cool. you've got you've got to be different and like i say i've been surfing for a good while and and i'm not bagging other surf uh, surf companies or anything like that but a lot of things are all the same yeah if that makes sense and look people are going to go ah oh, yeah you make board bags i know a lot of people make board bags but i try and be different in making my board bag yeah you're not mainstream you you, you like i said before to no, one no, of the no, other no, guests no. you know our strap line is never mainstream and that's that, that's why i wanted to chat to you because your board bags are certainly not mainstream um they're a little bit some of them are off the wall actually <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah as if you, yeah like sometimes like, i'll do a design and mate, it's it's always the way the ones that you don't think will work work the best and the ones you go mate that is that's it oh perfect and you're like it, 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 it people just don't like it but yeah it's 
I, I try and be different and I try and be creative. And that's all I can do. How long have you been doing it for now, Tom? Uh, oh, not very long. Like, only properly with, like, as a business, probably about a year. Wow. And you've, you've had some... Before that, it was kind of, I had to do my uni course and, yes. and, and whatnot, and then kind of really decide where I was going and what I was doing and if I really wanted to do this. And, but yeah, I'd say I'm probably hitting about a year. Yeah. Wow. Which isn't well, too bad, really. Well, well done to you, Tom. Well done to you, man. Because I think that um, we've, we've spoken off camera and you've, you've had some... Yeah, you've had some adversity in your life earlier on in your life, and I think yeah. um, more adversity um, because I mean you could have died when that when that uh, beam hit you, right? If it had hit you on your head, you probably yeah. you, you you probably wouldn't be sitting yeah. here having this it's conversation. On shoulder, so all this rough. Exactly. And then you had to yeah. completely sort of rethink what you were going to do with your life after that. Yeah. And here you are making board bags for. Cameron Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind about it. It's Jeff Bridges, man. The dude. Bridges. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Yeah, so well done, Tom. You've, uh, again, so many people that I speak to have, have, you know, especially, you know, during this time of, that we've just come through as, you know, collectively in the world, you know, people are having to, like, think on their feet, think, yep. you know, we say it outside the box creatively yeah. and there's some there's some really cool stories and stuff sort of evolving because of it you know through adversity yeah. you kind of like after the fire those those green shoots start to come and the flowers come back and like that like i'm not i'm not very an emotional person but uh, you know oh that kind of way but yeah they're always the best things if, if that makes sense it's you know it's just yeah I don't know yeah. how to explain it. I'm not, I'm not a, a wordsmith. <laughs> I don't think you were meant to be a plasterer. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> I really don't think you, you were meant to be a plasterer. I think you found your calling. And you're a creative person, dude. So, like, people can feel it. You know? like I, say, I never really, I never really thought, well, never thought it was in me. Like, you know, I just turn up on a building site and, plaster and go home and all that stuff and yeah it's 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 nice man it's kind of you go ah oh, oh, okay yeah that works it's rewarding yeah and it's cool to see that other people appreciate yeah, that I was looking for it. it is rewarding man it is you can stand back and go yeah <laughs> uh, because it's passion based like people can feel the love they can feel the passion they can see it and i mean a product because we're talking about a product here, yeah, it's always going to be better when it's born of passion and it's not That's someone right, yeah, being paid to do it. I you love, know, you're doing I, it. I, I genuinely love doing it. Good. Like, I, I'm quite like it. I, I, excuse me, I spend the weekend with my wife and kids as much as I can, but in the week, you know, I, 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 look, I do spend time with them and, and whatnot, but I actually genuinely enjoy waking up at the stupid o'clock in the morning and and I enjoy my entire day. I love I love doing it, which is great. How many board bag? How long does it take you to make one of those board bags? Ah, uh, it depends how complex they are. If they're not very complex, I can do one in about half an hour. Okay. And they're full of. But my machine's got a million stitches a an hour. You know, they're fat. They're fast machines, so it's just like brr, brr, feed it all through. Yeah. The more complex, ah. Oh, you, you can take an hour, you know, two hours. It, it, it depends what the customer wants. And, you know, if, I'm, if I add dyes or and do drip dyes or, you know, any form of dye or acrylic paints onto it, and, you know, then that takes time because you've got to do all that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like one board cover, someone wanted uh, like an, uh, an acrylic marble effect on it. And that took about three weeks. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, but that's that's what I mean. It's you know, it, it it can take me half an hour. Someone goes, I just want this, you know, a fabric with pineapples on or whatever mm -hmm. as a board bag. That that's that's really that, you literally you got the print fabric, 
and then you make your board bag it's it's not very fast uh, not very you know it's fast to do it's, it's not very time consuming whereas you know if you get a hang on bear with me like I say, so if it was, I won't bore you with fabrics. <laughs> no, it's, I'd like to know a bit about the fabrics. Do you do um, sort of 100% cotton, any any sort of uh, sustainable type fra fabrics like hemp and that sort of thing yet? Uh, well, you can use, so I use organic canvas. Okay. Um, the hemp, the, the jute fabrics isn't, it's not very, like canvas is strong. Sure. Um, hemp and stuff like that, it's, it's pretty soft and kind of ropey and not very good. Um, you can you can put basic prints onto it, but it doesn't work very well. Okay. Um, so I, I just use a weatherproof canvas. Right. Um, but like I was saying, so if you've got a board cover just in a plain canvas, mm -hmm. you can knock it out in no time. Um, but when you start adding whites and pink strips, so each one of them strips is you know, cut by hand, stitched, and then stitched, and stitched, and stitched, and does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, uh, very, very cool. So, guys, Seasick Threads, you got to go and check them out on Instagram. We're going to put all the links in the comments below. Please make sure you give them a follow. And um, if, the, if somebody wants to order a board bag from you, where do they go? How do they do it? Do you ship internationally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's all over the world, and it's with um, either DHL or Ozpost. Right. Um, and they just, if you just go online on c 6 um and just go through it that way, and you can even design your own. So if you go, ah, oh, I want a pink one with green flamingos or whatever, I'll, I can, I can do it. I can print, I can get the fabric printed and yeah. So if you want to design your own, if you've got a print that you want to do or whatever, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So fantastic. So if you guys want a board bag from C6 threads, we're going to put the links down below C6 threads.com. You can order international shipping via DHL. So please go over. This man makes amazing board bags for Jeff Bridges, Cameron Diaz, Johnny blog on the side of the, the road who's just a surfer <laughs> down the road from us. It's not just the famous people, you know. You look after everyone. That's it, man. Okay. It's about everybody. everybody. Share exactly. the love. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, apart from that, Steve, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm... You're living the dream. I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst having a beer. You're having a beer, living the dream, making board bags, fishing, and uh yeah. uh living the dream was yeah, it didn't really happen last night but um yeah i went uh, you guys get them in um africa they're called i think you guys call them dusky cobs is that the word dusky, dusky cobs. Cob. We call, yeah we call them mulloway oh okay right is that what you fish for there yeah oh well, uh, yeah that or where literally where i live so river over there yes uh, salt water river or fresh water so I've either got trout or mulloy, or if I go out to sea, tuna. Hard life, man. Oh man, hundred and twenty one kg tuna this year. I, I was saying that I didn't catch it. I drive the boat because I'm I can't reel in that size fish or I'll cry. <laughs> Your shoulder, dude. And um, I see you wearing a seasick thread T-shirt. Do you do you sell apparel as yet? as well uh, yeah i've got some hoodies and stuff on there like oh, how do i put it i don't want to I, I like to stick at one thing yeah and be good at the one thing than do a million and one thing so like i do do t-shirts and stuff like that i don't really push to sell them or or anything like that if you want it if people want a t-shirt you're more than welcome to buy one and i'm happy to make you them cool. but um i like to concentrate on my board covers because otherwise, you just, you, yeah, you, you just end up doing a million and one different products. And then you look at your loose sight of, on each one, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, exactly. You want to stick to your niche. And um, I think you found yeah. it. Uh, and don't, don't let the quality drop, you know, just. Yeah, that's it. You start concentrating on more and more things. So say your board covers are 100%. 
you start adding t-shirts, you know, you'll lose 5% concentration and making sure that your board cover is perfect and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, it's like people can buy t-shirts and stuff like that, but my main thing is is my board cover. So a, a lot of people do actually follow me from South Africa, man, a, a, a good amount. Well, I think we've got, I mean, we, li we live similar lifestyles and we share similar yeah. climates and similar surf breaks. And, you know, we, there, there's definitely an Antipodean link, you know, with all of us down in the yeah. Southern Hemisphere. So, I mean, yeah, people, way, it, people, man. people dig your, your board bags down here. And I just, I hope that you're going to get more followers through this. It's just been really cool gaining insight into your story basically and how you got there because as i said you started off life as a kid that was kind of um you know throughout through difficult situations had to go and live in portugal fell in love with surfing and um i think that's that's kind of where the surfing seed sat for a long long time you know in your heart oh well and duty man like uh, that first time I, like i've done it in whitby but you know whitby Mm -hmm. you lived in the uk you'll know what you know yeah. the, the north sea surfing to the portuguese coast and that first time surfing that was it man it was like <gasps> what is this <laughs> so tom we just want to say thank you so much for for joining us we know that you've got a very busy schedule you burn the candle at both ends working away with your needles till till midnight <laughs> and uh <laughs> So we we really appreciate you taking time out to chat to us. Everybody in South Africa, check out c6threads.com. We're going to put all the links down below. Go show this man some love. He has been through hell and back, and now he's finding his creative love bombs. And uh, let's let's throw some love back at him. So thank you so much, Tom. We really appreciate it, dude. Th thanks for having me, man. It's um yeah, no, I really appreciate it as well, man. Thank you. And to all you people in South Africa, I'll, I'm going to come one day. I'll, I'll come and visit it. I've got it. Yeah, we'll hold you to that. And uh, yeah. we'll make sure that, yeah. that if you visit South Africa, your, your fan club will be there. <laughs> uh, I'll, see you, I'll just see you at the airport and stay. <laughs> no worries, mate. You've always got a place to stay here. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, man. And, and good luck on your journey, dude. All the best for the future. And uh, we wish you all, we, we wish you well. And it's going to go well. I mean, it's fueled by passion. You're living the dream. You're making cool board bags. Just keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep spreading the love, Tom. Thanks so much. No, I appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Take it easy, man. Take care. Chat soon.